Our next presentation is from Holly Kiley, whose title is Gesturing to Make a Point. Who is that gesture for? Her advisor is Jorgen Bonam, I'm sorry, Bonemeyer, and from the Department of Linguistics. And um, you know, Holly's got some pretty interesting things going on. She has been all over the world. She's a soccer uh, certified uh, referee, loves snow enthusiast, and she's an expert in pearls. Ready, set, pitch. We wave our hands around when we talk. It's okay, everyone does it, it's fine. We're gesturing. We use gesture to help us describe the size or shape of things, like this fish I caught that was actually, it was this big, you'd never believe. We use gesture to give people directions on how to get places, to explain how things work, like a Rube Goldberg machine. We use gesture when it doesn't seem to mean anything at all. So what is the point of doing it? You can understand me without seeing my gestures, and I can talk to you without gesturing. But that's not what people do. We use gesture. Who are we gesturing for? There are two kind of answers to this. I could be gesturing for myself, the speaker. I could be gesturing to help me remember what I'm going to say or think of the word that I want to use. I could be gesturing for you, the audience. I could be trying to direct your attention to me or something else. Or I could be gesturing to illustrate something for you so that you can come up with a mental image of it. I want to know which one we're doing. I had people watch events and then describe them, and I watched them describe things to other people. I found that we have a negative correlation between the rate of gesture and the length of a description. So that means that I get really short descriptions with a high rate of gesture, a lot of gestures. I'll get something like the following. There's a girl, and she has this kind of like mallet thing and a long stick in front of her, and she takes the mallet and she smashes the stick and it goes everywhere. That's like 25 words and maybe eight gestures. That's a lot. I also get really long descriptions with very few gestures, so I'll get something like this. There's a girl, and there's a table, and there's a stick on the table, and the table's maybe trapezoidal. I think it's kind of a light brown color, but it looks like it might have a tablecloth over it. But um, anyway, she has a hammer, and she uses the hammer to smash a stick, and it goes all over the place, and some of the pieces land on the table, and some of the pieces land on the floor. Now that's like 50 words and one gesture. That's a little unusual. That's unexpected. It's not what I thought I would get. What does it tell us? Well, it kind of tells us that we are gesturing for the audience. Because if I was gesturing to help myself as a speaker, I would expect that as I say more things, I need more help, and so I gesture more to help myself more so I can say more. That's not what people get. That's not what we're doing. This implies that my gestures are something that I'm doing to try and communicate to you specifically. I want to visually highlight, underline, bold, italicize, or emphasize something that I think that you should think is important. So who am I gesturing for? Well, at least when I'm describing events, I'm gesturing for you. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Uh, 